Hi! Today I am going to show you how I modified the radio stock control of my Citroen C2 from a CAN bus control system to an analog control system. A few years ago, I replaced the original radio of the vehicle with an aftermarket doubled-in head unit. In order to maintain the radio steering wheel controls, I purchased a CAN bus interface from a company in the UK known as Connects2. The system worked quite well for about 6 years until recently when we picked up some CAN bus errors on the system of the vehicle. After a lot of troubleshooting and going through the whole system, we eventually traced the problem to the black box of the Connects 2 CAN bus interface. We removed the interface to restore the rest of the CAN bus but lost the functions of the steering wheel controls. After searching the internet, I found two videos showing how the stock controls was modified, converting them to analog. The only problem was that it was in Spanish and Russian, so I decided to make my own video explaining the process in English. The radio that I fitted was the Sony XAV601BT doubled-in head unit, which has a hardwire remote input using a mini jack at the back of the radio for the optional Sony rotary commander. This was also used by the Connex2 CAN bus interface. I used this mini jack as part of my setup, and although it has two positive pins and a ground, only the ground and tip was used. The conversion made use of resistors, alternating the voltage supply to the radio by using different values assigned to different buttons on the stock control. I started off by removing the stock from the steering wheel. This is a straightforward process, and there are a lot of videos on the internet explaining how to remove it. The only functions I wanted to use was the seek, source and volume control. I started off by opening up the stock control, and removing the ribbon cable attached to the board in the stock. This was easy as it was spot welded to the points in the control. To determine which point was used by which button, I tested each point and the number of them accordingly, as explained here. Looking from the top of the stock I found the first point to be for the seek forward function. The second one for the volume up. The third for the source. The fourth for the volume down. The fifth for the seat back, and the sixth point was the negative point. Point seven and eight for the memory I decided not to use, as I got interference from the other resistors. After finding each function, I soldered wires to the points on the stock control, and I reassembled the stock. I started off by using resistor values as described in the videos of the Pioneer setups. But after testing, I found that some of the resistor values did not work, or gave a totally different function to the buttons I wanted to use. After some additional research, I found a diagram on the resistor values used by the Sony Rotary Commander. Although the Rotary Commander has a lot more functions, I only concentrated on the resistor values of the functions I wanted to use. I have to admit that the values have to be exact for the buttons to work. I tested each resistor setup separately by grounding the live feed, which is 5V, from the mini jack to the ground with the resistors. I heat shrink the resistors and solder them to the wires assigned to the buttons, after testing each one confirming that they were supposed to do as planned. All of the ends of the resistors was soldered to the positive feet of the mini jack and the ground wire was soldered to the base of the mini jack. After a final test, as you can see here, the wiring was routed and plugged back into the back of the radio. Everything was taped up, and the stock was installed back onto the steering column. All videos I used for reference will be in the description below, as well as all the resistance values for the Sony head unit to be used for reference. Happy modding, and drive safe! Thanks for watching!